Our work today is going to be from section 6.3 in our geometry book called Arcs and Angles. And we're going to be looking at different relationships between the angles in a circle and the arcs that those angles sometimes intersect. And our investigation one here is going to come from a sketch pad lab that I have sometimes done about inscribed angle properties. So the first lab here goes through the steps in creating a diagram that'll look something like this. And what I've done is I've done that ahead of time so we can take a look at it. So we're looking at the inscribed angle conjecture here. Now remember, an inscribed angle is an angle whose sides are chords on a circle and whose vertex is on the circle. So we're looking at an inscribed angle right here. And what I'd like you to look at is the relationship between that angle which is DCB, and the arc over here that it intercepts. So from B to D is a minor arc, and you'll look at that measure right here is 112.29 degrees. So if I adjust that angle to maybe a little bit nicer number, let's try to make this about 80 degrees or so. I can't seem to get it exactly 80, but if you look at that and look at the relationship between the inscribed angle over here and the measure of the arc that it intercepts, you can see that the inscribed angle is half of the arc that it intercepts, 40 degrees versus 80 degrees. Now I can check that with another angle here. So let's say if we drag our arc to be right around 100 degrees, we can see that our inscribed angle, although it's changed, is exactly half of the arc that it intercepts. So this is one of our properties called the inscribed angle conjecture. So let's go ahead and write that into our note sheet here. So the inscribed angle conjecture says that the measure of an angle inscribed in a circle is half of the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So is half the measure of the arc that it intercepts. When I say intercept, I basically mean look at the two sides of the angle here, and then the endpoints of that angle here and here form this arc. So that's the intercepted arc compared to the inscribed angle right there. So that's our first property. Going down our page here, we have another property related to inscribed angles that intercept the same arc. So let's take a look at this one here. All right, so I've pre-made this geometry sketch pad sketch, and look at the two inscribed angles that we have. We have an inscribed angle B, C, D here that I have made sort of a pink color, and then we also have an inscribed angle B, E, D that is in blue. Now notice, both of those inscribed angles open up to the same arc here, the same minor arc B, D. So if I adjust where E is, notice that nothing is changing in terms of our measurements right here. If you think back to what we had just talked about, how the inscribed angle is half of the arc, notice 60 degrees to 120 degrees, there it is. There's that relationship that where the inscribed angle is a half. Same thing with this other angle, where the inscribed angle is half. And I can drag that other angle vertex around, but since I'm not changing where the arc is, where that arc is intercepted, we're not changing any of the measurements. So the angle stays exactly the same here. If you look at it, you want to measure it with a protractor. Even though it's moving around where the vertex is along the circle, the angle measure is not changing. The only thing that's going to change here is if I start actually dragging the arc. So I'm dragging point D, so I'm actually changing what the measure of arc BD is. So let's change it to, I don't know, 120 degrees, let's say, so around 120 degrees. And notice that the two inscribed angles are still exactly half of that. So the inscribed angle relationship will still hold true. So now let's go back to our notes page here and write in. So inscribed angles that intercept the same arc, all those inscribed angles that cross that same arc are congruent. So both of those angles that I was talking about, both those inscribed angles, as long as they're opening up to that same arc, then those inscribed angles will be congruent to each other. 
right, our third property is related to angles inscribed in a semicircle. So let's take a look at that one here. So right now, I basically have my inscribed angle relationship again. Notice that my inscribed angle right here, DCB, is half of the arc that it intercepts, arc BD over here. So we already do that from our previous conjecture. Now what I'm going to do is make this segment, I've added this segment BD, which is currently a chord. And we know that there's a special type of chord that goes through the center of the circle called a diameter. So if I drag that chord so that it becomes the diameter of the circle, once again, I'm not going to be able to get it exact right here, but I think that is going to be good enough to demonstrate the point. So now I have arc BD, and you'll notice that it is forming a semicircle because chord BD is going through the center. So BD as a chord right here is a diameter, and therefore arc BD over here would be a semicircle. Now what has happened to our inscribed angle when we did that? Well, this should look familiar to you. This looks like a 90 degree angle, and unfortunately I can't get it quite 90 degrees exactly because of the pixels here, but you got the idea there. Ooh, that's really close. So now let me drag this around again, and this shouldn't surprise you, but notice that my angle C here, my angle DCB, is not changing. It stays 90 degrees, which once again, if you think back to our first property where the inscribed angle is always half of the arc that it intercepts, well, if I'm not changing the semicircle here, then that's staying at 180 degrees, which means that my inscribed angle has to be half of that, so it's going to stay 90 degrees. So I've got a bunch of right triangles. There's a right triangle, there's a right triangle, there's a right triangle, because that angle is staying at 90 degrees. All right, let's write that down for our third property on the page here. All right, so angles inscribed in a semicircle measure 90 degrees, or you could say are right angles. That is called our inscribed angle in a semicircle conjecture.